Okay, this first one is telling us it's an arithmetic sequence, and it wants us to write the explicit and recursive, but in order to write the explicit and recursive, we need the common difference. So we're going to use the little formula we're used to writing here for this in order to find that common difference first. So here's something that starts at 16 and is adding a common difference 14 minus 1 times or 13 times, right? And that's going to end at negative 920. So we're going to solve this equation backwards, 16 plus 13d, minusing 16 from both sides. The common difference, I'm grabbing my calculator right now, you should do the same, 936 divided by 13. So I get negative 72. So that means we're subtracting 72 with each step, which is why it gets down into like a, a negative number. So for my explicit, <clears throat> oh, they wrote these backwards. I like to do it in this order. F of one equals 16. F of n equals F of n minus one minus 72. And then the explicit, begins with 16, subtracting 72 each time to the previous. Here comes my explicit. Begins with 16, minus 72, and minus 1. Okay, so there's my explicit, there's my recursive, how'd you do? Next one they tell us it's a geometric, so same thing before we can write the recursive and the explicit, we need to know what the common ratio is, so let's go apply the same stuff. So 81, 920 is times some common ratio 8 minus 1 times, and that should land at 5. So we divide 5 by 81, 920, and we're going to get r to the 7th equals Let's grab a calculator. You need one that can take a radical, a root. So 81, 920, gives us 0 0.00006135, if you've done it correctly. And then we're taking the seventh root of that. So second, oh, let's go seven x root of the previous answer and it tells us that it's one fourth. So all of that and it literally just equals 0.25 or one fourth. There we go. So now we have enough for our explicit and our recursive. We have the r. So recursive goes f of 1 equals 81, 920, f of n equals f of n minus 1 times 1 fourth, or times 0.25, and then the explicit goes f of n equals 81, 920 times 1 fourth to the power of n minus 1. Okay, how'd you do? Next are the exponential equations where we need to find the same base. So looking at the first one, I know 9 can be rewritten as a 3, and I know 243 can be rewritten as a 3. So let's start with that as our big base. Well, 9 would become 3 to the negative 2 power, and then don't forget about this x. And 243, try that on a calculator, is 3 to the fifth. Now that I have the big bases the same, I can set the exponents equal and solve and I get x is equal to negative 2.5. <clears throat> There's our first one, how'd you do? Next one, we have 6 to the x plus 7 is equal to 6 to the negative 3. That fraction turns into a negative exponent, and now that we have the same big base of 6, we can just set the exponents equal. Next, 8 can be rewritten as 2 to the negative 3, 
32 can be rewritten as 2 to the fifth. Now that we have the same big bases, we can set the exponents equal, and we get x is equal to negative 3 fifths. So $1,000 from the families when they were born, Eric's parents put his money in the savings that earns 5.7% interest compounded annually. Okay, uh-oh, percent multiplier. We're supposed to remember a little formula for this. It's called the 100 plus rate formula. Do you remember this from your math one or your, your teachers last year? But 100 plus the rate of 5.7 becomes 105.7 and then we have to convert this multiplier into a decimal in order to use it in our explicit and recursive. So this multiplier, once I move the decimal twice, becomes 1.057. So that's where this comes from. Okay, <clears throat> writing the explicit and the recursive so they received a thousand when they were born that's basically time zero so by the way i'm starting with eric's situation so eric's parents put money in the account so f of zero equals a thousand f of n equals f of n minus one times 1.057 that's where that multiplier comes from from our work up there then our explicit goes 1000 times 1.057 to the power of time. How many years? Okay, next one is Tommy's situation. Tommy's parents put money in an account that was 100 per year. And so the recursive, again, he started at time zero with this out, 1,000. And f of n equals f of n minus 1 uh, plus 100. He gets 100 every year. So the explicit goes, began with 1,000 adding 100 every year. So this one down here should have a power, oops, sorry. Uh, should I use T? They didn't tell me what to use, did they? You either need to use T or N. I'm like going back and forth. So F of T equals this, F of N equals N. Let's just use one and then the other. Okay, both boys can withdraw their money when they turn 18 years old. Who will have the least amount of money at the time? So the first one is 1,000 times 1 1.057 to the power of 18. You're going to do that on a calculator and see what you get. And then the second one is 1,000 plus 100 times 18 years and see what we get for that one. So take a minute to try it on Desmos right now. I'm going to go 1,000 plus 100 times 18. I'm getting 2,800 for this one. And then 100 zero zero times 1.057 to the power of 18. And that's 2712. Well, what are we supposed to know in math? We're supposed to know that exponential functions always beat out linear functions. Well, in this case, after 18 years, it looks like it's the opposite, that Tommy has more. And so that means the question's asking who has the least amount of money. The answer will be that Eric has the least. Okay? Now down here, <clears throat> we're just looking at kind of an extension of features of functions. They give us one curve, they give us one line, and we're supposed to answer these questions. Where is f of x equal to g of x? 